Hi guys, it is finally the last day of the five day Sagantai trail to Machu Picchu. It's been really fun, but very difficult. I've even kind of started to forget where we're even hiking to. Last night we stayed in Aguas Calientes, a small town located at the bottom of Machu Picchu. And now it's time for that final hike. 12 o'clock midnight. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm over. Everybody's filming out. <laughs> We left our hotel at around 4 in the morning and started hiking at 5 a.m. before the sun was even peaking. An hour and a half later, we are finally there. We are currently walking through Machu Picchu and it is absolutely amazing. It is unbelievably incredible that they discovered this, that they tried to build an area here just surrounded by mountains. This is just so cool. I'm honestly, I didn't think it would be this incredible. sure how well the footage can really capture just how extraordinary this place really is. I mean it's one of the seven wonders of the world and the remains of it are just spectacular. It's rainy and cold, but it's awesome. The Inca civilization started back in 1438 and only lasted roughly a hundred years. Construction of Machu Picchu started shortly after that in 1440. Now why would the Incas choose a place that's so far from everything, so difficult to get to? I mean, our hike was straight up an hour and a half of uphill switchbacks. There are several reasons for this. It's partly because then they could be safe from natural disasters and safe from invasions. They could see potential enemies down in the valley below, but those below could not see that there was a city on top. They are also close to the mountain gods. The snow-capped mountain that we hiked on day two, Salkantai, is protecting the Machu Picchu mountain. And finally, there are a lot of fruits, vegetables, healing plants, and gold in this region of the high jungle. All the rock material was already here, so they split the boulders and made the city much lower. They had to carve the stone, the boulder, into pieces. An example of that is that boulder in the lower part. You can see it was cracked the boulder over the square boulder. Eh? See it, right? Boulder. Many pieces, right? It is believed that maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people worked here to construct this place, and around 500 of them were permanent residents in the ruins, the rest commuting from Cusco, as it was the biggest city at that time. This is one of the, let's say, residences of Ordinary people, eh? people that lived in this area, lodgings, okay? At least four people lived here. Machu Picchu is not built in a flat area, not in the valley where you can expand the constructions. You are up in the mountain, limited, restricted, you know, to land. So Incas had to do as much as they could to share. So this house is a place where perhaps four people lived. And they had no furnitures table, chair, no, they didn't have that. Incas were so practical, simple. Those closed windows, they were their shelves. They were storing here what they had. Llamas, blankets were lie down, no? Llama leather, like llama skin, you lie down, you use a llama or alpaca blankets so to sleep warm enough. All day long, they did work. They were not here cooking. They were not here doing other things, no. People that were building Machu Picchu, they were supplied by food and drink by other people that were practicing the same system of work. Other people, instead of coming and building Machu Picchu, they spent time cooking to supply them, making chicha. Other people spent time waving closings for the constructors of Machu Picchu. So it was a very well-organized society. Construction took around 80 years, but they eventually left due to lack of food and overpopulation. 
Almost 400 years later, a farmer named Augustine was down in the valley below looking up at these mountains thinking how interesting they were so he wanted to go and see them. When he arrived, his first thought was, there's a lot of farmland here, a lot of open land, this would be a great place. So he started chopping down trees, clearing the area, and all of a sudden, he discovered the ruins. Over time, this place became famous as the legendary lost city of the Inca. There's more than 4,000 people that visit a day Machu Picchu. So it's a lot of people. That's why it's not allowed jumping. Imagine, not just one person jumps, many people jumps. And the effects you do you know, causes complications. Morgan, we were over here, weren't we? Yeah. Where the clouds are way in the mountains. Over there. <laughs> Morgan and I absolutely loved Machu Picchu and it felt extra rewarding that we worked so hard to get here. Even though we were exhausted in the morning, we were just so excited to be done hiking and then I think kind of shocked just how amazing Machu Picchu really is. Plus we had just an amazing tour guide, Ugo, such a cool guy, so much fun to get to know him on the trek and he was really educated, so knowledgeable about everything on the trek. We not only saw beautiful places but we learned a lot. Even though we had like millions of blisters on our feet, our bodies were completely wrecked. It was a very difficult few days of hiking. We made so many new friends and had like a kick-ass time. But anyway, last thing I wanna mention for anybody considering doing the Salkantai Trail is to be very prepared with your gear. Whatever the tour company says you should bring, bring that stuff. It's very important because you don't know what to expect. Also, there's a lot of confusion out there for when to book these tours. So for the Inca Trail, it's the most popular, and yes, you need to book like six months to maybe even 12 months in advance. For the Salkantai Trail, you don't need to do that. You honestly could probably get away with booking it a few days in advance, but I don't recommend that. Book it a few months just to guarantee your spot. Last thing I wanna mention is that on day five, this day that we went to Machu Picchu, you have two options of how you're gonna to return to Cusco. That's either via bus or via train. Morgan and I took the bus and didn't realize that it's actually another three to four hours of hiking down with all of your gear and then a seven hour bus ride to Cusco. If I were gonna do this again, I would probably pay the money and do the train um, just because we were exhausted, like that was the last thing we wanted to do. So just my advice, if you have any other questions or concerns, please leave me a comment or if you feel more comfortable, send me a private message on Instagram and I will do my best to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you are new, turn on your notifications because then you'll know when my video's out and I'll see you next time. Maybe not Morgan, but yeah. Bye. Bye. Fun fact, I actually edited part of this video from my tiny little iPhone. Did anybody notice anything different? Adobe launched a new app called Adobe Rush that lets you edit videos between your phone and your computer. So I tried it out because obviously I'm an avid Adobe user and it's pretty cool. I literally could edit a video, I don't know, walking around outside, sitting in a bathtub, working out at the gym, like literally anywhere. Um, but I wanna make sure the quality's there. So what do you guys think? Do you notice the difference? Is it better? Is it worse? Let me know. Also, I want to give another huge thanks to you, Jenny, for his awesome drone shots that are super rare. I'll link his video above. And then also Ben from Ben's Bucket List YouTube channel. He has a different perspective of drone shots that I also use in this video so that I could really illustrate what Machu Picchu looks like and really explain the history. So I owe them a big thank you. Again, drone shots are not allowed at Machu Picchu. If you're thinking about doing it, don't do it. The reason that it's not allowed is because one, Drone shots are loud. They're very disruptive. And two, they don't want drones ruining anything. You don't want them dropping out of the sky or getting lost. Machu Picchu is already having issues with things breaking down and they're trying to preserve it. That's why you can't be jumping and doing crazy things. So don't be flying your drone in places you're not allowed to unless you get a permit, permission, whatever. So thank you to the people who already took the shots and let me use it in this video. Yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah.